Thanks for staying with us at STL Live. I'm Sarah Bernard. We're speaking about substance abuse and the opioid epidemic with our guest, Craig Schmidt from the Department of Health. Welcome back, Craig. Thank you. So um, just before we went to break, we were talking right. about um, the different things that we can do as consumers with our um, prescriptions, um, limiting um, how many pills we actually get at the pharmacy, talking to our doctors about how much we really need. And then you were mentioning we can also dispose of the medications that we don't need anymore. So what is the best way um, to dispose of those medications? We don't just throw them in the trash, do we? Right, we don't do that because it's not good for the environment. Um, you can contact NCADA and they have some of these packages uh, from Malincrod and other locations where you can put it in there and it um, has some uh, carbon filters and you can put some water in there and put it in the trash. Another way is to, uh, there are DEA take backs that are twice a year. The next one coming up is going to be in uh, October 27th of this year and there'll be more information about that on the STLDOH um, website and Facebook and Twitter. Hope, hopefully I got that so correct. So the Department of Health website and it's a take back and is it something right. where our, um, our community members can actually, they take their prescriptions that they right. no longer need to a location, right. such as the police Likely department Likely a Walgreens, or CVS, that sort of thing. Throughout the year in mm -hmm. various places, some of the uh, police departments also have that. Right. But really we just wanna make sure that, that people do that, but there's also shortly gonna be, because of legislation, the ability probably, so stay tuned, to go to your local Walgreens or CVS and be able to bring back your prescriptions. Doesn't that make a lot of sense? Yeah. Take it back where you got it from. Right, right. And I do know that the pharmacies do carry, um, you can purchase these types of right. bags that you mentioned the NCADA carries, yeah. which you can get them for free at the NCADA, just um, right. visit their office. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so what else is the city doing then? Um, I mean, it's, it's a mounting issue and it's got to be right. just very extremely time consuming and taking a lot of a lot of brain power to figure out how to help our community with this, this growing problem. So we're continue to work with uh, St. Louis County with the Prescription Drug Monitoring Program, which allows us to um, understand the level of the problem and also to try to make sure that people aren't doing the doctor shopping kind of thing where they're getting too many prescriptions. So um, does that still go on? I mean, I know back a long time ago, it was a very common problem, but it seems like there's been so many checks and balances now, but is it still an issue then in our state? Well, it's not throughout the state. It covers um, about 66 jurisdictions, counties and cities, maybe about 90% of the doctors and 83% of the population. So it doesn't cover everybody at this point, but we're, we're still working on that. Okay. All right, good. So and is there anything else? If, if a, let's just talk about it in your own home, um, in our own homes. Right. Obviously, getting rid of the prescriptions, we talked about that, and that is a huge issue. We don't realize um, how somebody visiting our home, it may not be our own family members, maybe a visitor um, who has a, a problem with substance um, abuse, maybe Correct. looking in our medicine cabinet. So we want right. to get, have our own home safe, but what else can we do if we think there might be a problem in our own family in our own home. Okay. In our own so home. there are now some resource community centers uh, for peer support within the communities. So uh, there's one in South City that I'm aware of, and I always re forget the exact name of this. It's something like the St. Louis Opioid um, Reform and Recovery Center, which is on South Broadway. Uh, people can should also obviously speak with their doctor, their primary care physician. Uh, you can reach out to BHR, Behavioral Health Resources, that has a 24-hour-a-day resource number that people can contact. As well. Lots and lots of resources. Lots of and resources. Now, would, yeah. is it safe to say that if we go to the Department of Health website, we can find some of these resources? Is it there yet, or are you guys still working well, on Well, they it? put up things uh, of various natures uh, of public health on that website and also on the Facebook and Twitter. So they should look at it every day, really, and become a friend. Yeah, lots. And then, of course, the NCADA, which we've already mentioned, right. is a great resource Correct. as well. So, Absolutely. All right. So we do want our community members to know that there are there is help available, there whether is. they need That's help right. or a family member or friend. Right. And August 31st, it's upcoming, is Overdose, Overdose Awareness Day. So it's an opportunity, once again, to become more aware of some of those things that are, that are available. And I expect that St. Louis Department of Health will have something about that. Yeah, so there's never, uh, there's no shame in Absolutely asking for help not. in, in right. recovery. It's a good thing. So, Correct. all right, very good. Well, thank you so much, Craig. Okay. And you can contact the Department of Health 
by visiting St. Louis, St. Louis mo.gov. There's more STL Live after this, so please stay with us. Thank <laughs> you.